Good morning and once again welcome to Market Insights here on Suk News Television Lagos. We're hoping that you had a good weekend. It's the start of a new uh, trading week or if you like the start of a new business week and we are all about giving you everything that you need to know with regards to what the market looks like and uh, the granular activities, the naira and cobble of it all as it does concern you and uh, most importantly your wallet and or your bank account. Welcome again. My name is David Chiedu. Today we're going to be looking at the rising cost of healthy feeding in this part of the world. We'll get into details of that particular conversation, uh, but not before we take a look at what happened last week on the trading floor of the NGX. And that ended Friday, the 4th of October, 2024. So at the end of last week day of trading on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, a total of 320,700,958 shares in 8,763 deals corresponding to a market value of 6,021,557,886 Naira 27 cover were traded. Compared with the previous NGX trading day, that was Thursday, October 3, Friday's data shows showed 19% improvement in volume, 11% decline in turnover, but 2% improvement in deals. Now, the current market capitalization of the Nigerian Stock Exchange is 56 trillion naira. In the aggregates, 119 NGX listed equities participated in trading, ending with 33 gainers and 21 losers. Seplat's Petroleum Development Company led the gainers with 10% share price appreciation, closing at 4,964 naira 70 cover per share, followed by Associated Boss Company going up 9.82% in the positive. Livestock feeds went up plus 9.7%, and Caverton Offshore Support Group went up 9.62%. On the losing side, Eterna came out last with an end-of-day price depreciation of 10% at 27 naira per share, followed by PZ Cossins Nigeria going down 9.49%. Regency Alliance, Regency Alliance Insurance rather, went down 8.89%, and AXA Mansard Insurance went down 7.08%. United Bank for Africa, UBA, recorded the highest volume of 36.7 million traded shares, followed by Sterling Bank at 23.6 million, Ela Lakes at 23.3 million, and Lafarge Wapco at 16.7 million shares. And that's what it looked like on the floor, on the trading floor of the NGX last week as it ended Friday, October the 4th, 2024. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll get straight into the conversation, the rising cost of healthy diet or COHD if you like, and we will be assessing the impact on the economy. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's still Market Insight this uh, Monday morning, the 7th of October 2022. Many thanks again for joining us. We're talking about the rising cost of healthy diets this morning and assessing the impact. Eating healthy these days has become a struggle for very many Nigerians, especially those who have subsistent means of income. Being able to feed is one problem. Now, feeding, but not eating healthy or but not feeding feeding healthy has its own implications. The gap, as it were, keeps growing. Now, the national average cost of healthy diets in Nigeria has increased by 46.2% in eight months 
in the year 2024, higher than headline inflation and food inflation, according to a report by the NBS, and that is in the National Bureau of Statistics and the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition. It revealed that the national average cost of a healthy diet increased to 1,255 naira per adult per day in August from 858 naira earlier reported reported rather in January and 786 naira reported in December last year. Now the question is what the implications are for the average struggling Nigerian citizen. That's perhaps what you're asking now. Well, we discuss that and more on the program this morning. So we're being joined by an economics lecturer at the University of Lagos, as well as a research fellow. He is also a research fellow, rather, at the Institute of Nigeria-China Development Studies, the University of Lagos. Ms. Uh, Dr. Ajumo Olusheya joins us this morning on the program. Uh, Dr. Olusheya, thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me this morning. Can you hear me loud and clear? Um, it's great to have you joining us, Doctor. Are you here? Yes, um, yes. So first of all, we're going to start with, um, you know, the numbers which we are seeing right now. It's being reported by the National Bureau of Statistics, of Statistics right? And um, they don't particularly fill us with that much confidence. Um, according to them, the average cost of healthy diet has gone up to 1,255 naira per adult, um, you know, from... 858 that he was um, much earlier in the year. As a matter of fact, in Lagos particularly, you need to have over 1,600 naira to be able to feed properly. Uh, when I say properly, to have a healthy diet. Uh, the same goes for other uh, the two other states that have uh, high numbers, that have racked high numbers over the months, talking about Ogun State and um, River State, where you also have to have a thousand six over 1,600 naira and 1,500 naira respectively. So essentially, it means that if you do not and this is, you know, addressing the Lagos uh, uh, context right now. Of course, we're going to talk about it from the general perspective. But in a city like Lagos, essentially what this means is um, for the average poor person, or if you like, for the average low income earner um, who barely struggles to make a living, uh, they, they, if they're going to feed well, going by this particular um, indices, they need to have at least 1,600 and um, 15 naira or 1,400, 1,642 naira, as the case may be. What do you make of these, uh, prof uh, doctor? Like you said, to um, eat an appropriate meal, the BRS is um, 1,600 naira, and you cannot be living, you cannot be eating just once a day. You know, uh, at least on the average, People are supposed to eat twice a day. So we are talking about over 3,000 naira on feeding alone. And you know, when, when, when you multiply that 3,000 by um, 30 days, that gives you 90,000 naira. And the minimum wage in Nigeria is 70,000 naira. And we are just talking about food alone. We are not talking about all other things, transportation, accommodation, you know, you, you still have to take care of, you know, um, your clothes, you have to bathe, you have to wash your mouth. So there are so many uh, expenses. So when you look at these expenses, fix are fixed the income. Then you know it's a critical um, situation that calls for a critical analysis. Um, the way things are, when people are actually shouting that a big power, it is a fact, and. Um, this will definitely have implications on you know the kind of life people will be eating because the moment you don't have money to eat healthy then you just you just start eating any and anything that comes along your way in fact it's so critical that some people might not even be able to get a meal a day so that is the situation we find ourselves some it might be only you know, Gary, that they'll be able to soak in a day. And that's just keeping alive. And the 
the precaution of that is going to be in the near future because a man that is not eating healthy by the time you start having children mm -hmm. uh, it is definitely going to uh, affect you know the children is going to give back to you so when you are not eating healthy you will not be healthy and when you are not healthy the offspring that will come out of you will not be healthy and once you are not healthy it is going to affect your productivity. So this can create a, a perpetual cycle of poor people. Because once you are not healthy, you cannot produce properly, you know, you will remain poor. And so are the offspring coming out of you, you remain poor. So this is a critical situation that needs, you know, a proper um, diagnosis. Uh, all right, uh, doctor, now, um... Some of the main drivers, according to the NBS, uh, some of the main drivers of this are legumes, particularly legumes, you know, and then others, uh, nuts and seeds and starchy foods or starchy staples and vegetables as well. Now, on a month on month basis, according to the NBS, this has declined by 0.8% compared to the uh, previous cost. Uh, in July. Can you give us a sense of, you know, what this means in real terms or in practical terms economically? And uh, when, when, when you look at what is happening in the country, you understand what that means. You know, for a while now, Nigeria has been battling with insecurity outside, you know, the transportation costs that has increased. This has seriously negatively affected agricultural productivity in Nigeria. And uh, so once demand is more than supply, we all know that the prices will rise. So there are three things affecting us in this country. Number one is the issue of banditry and especially in the north, because that's the food basket of the country. Then number two is the issue of um, transportation costs because of the uh, subsidy remover and the exchange rate liberalization that's at, that has you know, changed the price of petrol from 180 naira to almost 900 naira. You, know, you can see the impact of that. So transporting the food from the north down to the south or to the west you know, has definitely impacted the price of the food. And another problem similar to that is the issue of uh, climate change. See, we are in um, October now. By now, we are supposed to be saying, oh, the rain is already going. But as it is now, it's still raining every day. So, which is sending wrong signals to the farmer. Because you know the farmer would not know when should they plant, when should they do this and others. So the climate change is affecting food production. The fuel price that has increased the transportation of those food from the north down to the where it is needed is affecting you know the food price. Also, the banding tree in the north, which is limiting you know the farmers from doing what they know how to do, are the three major effects um, that is affecting the food production in Nigeria. And um, like I've been saying lately, if this is the um, harvesting period and prices of food is still as expensive as we are witnessing, then what will not happen when we are out of, you know, harvesting period? So the, the road ahead is going to be very, very rough. And my advice to people is we must try to cultivate all the available food we have. What I mean by that is we must not waste any food resources in any way. We must make sure that, you know, we, 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 call, we, we, we save, we use what we have well, because if this is harvesting period and prices of food is as expensive as we are witnessing, then we can imagine what will happen when it's no more harvesting period. And I don't want to right. say more than that. Um, Dr. Olusheye, 
We'll uh, quickly take a short break. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation. This is still Market Inside, by the way, here on Souk News Television. And we're talking about the uh, rising cost of healthy diets in the country. Uh, we've been talking with Dr. Ajumo Lucheye. He is an economics lecturer at the University of Lagos. The conversation continues shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back to Market Insight. Many thanks for sticking around. We're still talking about the issues uh, regarding the rising cost of healthy diets, which is becoming a problem. Eating is not just um, uh, the issue right now. It's eating and eating well or feeding and feeding well has indeed proven to be quite the Herculean task, especially in recent months uh, since the turn of uh, this particular year. We're now down to the uh, final quarter of the year. And according to the NBC, uh, they, they seem to have put out the report saying that um, Nigerians um, aren't particularly feeding as well as they used to feed uh, simply because they cannot afford to buy or to get healthy meals which right now sits at 1,615 Naira. Uh, if you live in a city like Lagos, 1,642 Naira if you live in a city or if you live in uh, places like Ogun State, and 1,500 Naira, uh, over 1,500 Naira actually, if you live in a place like River State, which all three states that you wear are actually the highest. Uh, but of course, in um, other parts of the country, uh, most, most uh, particularly the northern region, you have it ranging from uh, uh, between 1,200 and 1,250 Naira as you wear. But it doesn't preclude the fact that um, Nigerians generally uh, have quite the uh, larger concern at this point in time when it does come to not just feeding at all, because anybody can ingest anything, but um, whatever you're ingesting that doesn't uh, uh, constitute a nutrition in your system is where the problem is, as I mentioned earlier, it does have its own implications. I'm not the health expert, but of course, uh, you don't need to be an expert to know that if you do not have um, or constantly have balanced meals or healthy meals, uh, you may or may not be setting yourself up for uh, long-term health um, implications that might not be totally palatable for you. Um, we're still with Dr. Ajumwa Ulusheye. He's an economics lecturer at Unilag, uh, that's the University of Lagos. He's a research fellow at the Institute of Nigeria China Development Studies, University of Lagos. Uh, Dr. Ulusheye is still with us. Doctor, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Now, let's. Um, earlier, you 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 touched a little bit on uh, some of the issues with regards to uh, income, uh, touching on the the minimum wage, which, for all intents and purposes, not very many uh, states have implemented them as yet. Uh, the new um, seventy over seventy thousand naira minimum wage, as he were. Now. Um, Let's talk about the implications of this on households. Um, earlier, much earlier, I talked about subsistence uh, income earners, the ones who go day to day, uh, more like more or less making what they consume on a daily basis. Those ones, and uh, we've seen what the World Bank says about uh, the percentage of Nigerian middle class being pushed into you know the lower income uh, earning bracket, as it were. So essentially. The, the, the hitherto poor people are getting poorer and the ones who we could consider as comfortable are now in the bracket of poor. So it's been downhill over the last year and a half. And um, right now, seeing as you know, we're talking about this particular issue, it does come right back to the, the, the primary unit of society, which is the household or the family, as it were. So um, in your view, doctor, what are the implications for um, household budgets? and expenditure patterns. Where do you see this uh, going for us, especially with the advent of uh, the new minimum wage, which, you know, experts still say is not totally commensurate, given the reality of things? With the reality on ground in Nigeria, um, there is no way anybody can successfully live 
on the minimum wage as it is uh, with the prices of things in the market. Um, like the explanation I gave, if, if the minimum wage is 70,000 Naira and feeding a loan is taking more than 90,000 Naira in a month. So automatically, uh, there is no way anybody can live on that uh, minimum wage. Because if to feed one person, you need like 90,000 Naira. We are not talking about transportation. We are not talking about accommodation. So what is actually happening is that the medium, the, the middle class mm -hmm. have actually been pushed, you know, to become poor. So it's like the, the, the middle class in Nigeria, that fabric has been destroyed. And if the middle class are now poor, what will not happen with the lower class? You know, the poor people, that means they are now you know, far, far poorer. And all these have implications, you know, um, for the country in terms of, you know, the, the socioeconomic life. But I, I don't want to go into the field that is not mine. I just want to stick uh, to that aspect of economics. But the truth is this, which when people don't have enough money, there are two things that people are bound to do. One is to look for other means with which they can survive. And if those other means are not available, then the next thing is to, is to go into crime. So it's, it's a what you call, it's, it's sure banker. Because the way it is now, once what you are earning is not enough to sustain you, then the next thing is you start looking for alternative. And we need to ask ourselves all next questions in this country. Are there alternatives? Because people can say, oh, start farming. When you are telling people to start farming, people living in Lagos where there are no bush and all those things, where do you want them to be farming? Then people that are not even settled, people that are hungry, how can you expect them to start farming? Because you are running around how you are going to feed now. Somebody is telling you that you should go and farm. Because if you start farming now, at least whatever you farm, it should take minimum of three months before you can start you know, harvesting it. So if you know there are no alternatives and people are to survive, then the next thing people is going to resort to is crime, which will further worsen the situation of things in the country. Doctor, let's stick to that particular train of thought. Um, still talking about income, as you were. It's shrinking, more or less, almost on a daily basis. And some have attributed, some experts, that is, have attributed what's going on right now to um, the government's, some of the government's fiscal policies over the last year and a half or thereabouts, saying that um, the, at the core of it all, its delivery has been faulty. Uh, and, you know, it wasn't um, supposed to be to start with, or it wasn't necessary to start with. While well, some others have said that, listen, these policies are great. However, it's the failure of execution uh, that has been the problem so far and it's plunged Nigeria uh, to where they find themselves, Nigerians rather, to where they find themselves. Um, what are your thoughts um, personally, Doctor? what is happening in the country, I, I, I will say we are not having problem of policies or the problem of um, implementation. The problem we are having is accumulated effect of what has been happening over the years. You know, it has come, you know, to roost. To, to... It, it, it's, it's sad because, you know, when you look at the situation of things in the country, you will see that um, most of the problem that brought us to our knees in this country, they are still there. So it's not about, because honestly, when I look at the economic uh, policies of this current government, uh, I'm in support of it. I'm in total support of it. But there are some things that we are looking at that is giving us concern. And those are the real issues. Because if we look back, when you know people in government were investing money and you know just spending money anyhow, nobody was talking then as much as we are supposed to talk because it's not affecting us. Now it is not affecting us. Everybody is now talking, so we don't need to wait until 
we are seeing the effect of what is happening before we start talking. We should start talking once you know we see what government is doing that is not appropriate. We are not supposed to wait. Look at us as a country. We have, you know, um, we have at least large amount of crude oil in the country. It's an aberration for us to be importing fuel. And over the years, that's what we've been doing. Now, even up to now, we are still importing fuel. We hope very soon we'll stop importing fuel. These are the things we are supposed to have paid attention to that we are not paying attention. Now, you know, because the price of oil is now so high and all those things, government, you know, cannot make do with all the subsidies that they were doing. Everybody's now shouting because it's now biting our pocket. But all along that we were seeing what was happening, nobody's talking. You see, another thing is, up till now, we are not holding our governors accountable. All attention is on the federal government, which is wrong. We need to pay attention to the both the federal government, the state, and even the local government. All these things are, you know, things that we need to pay attention to, you know, that will force those in government to do appropriate things. For instance, you know, look at the current situation and see the country is very, very broke now. But when you see the way people in government are spending, it's as if all is well, when we can see that all is not well. So these are the situations that we need to be shouting. How can you be telling us to tighten our belt when those in government are loosening their belt? Those are the issues we need to pay attention to. The situation in the country is critical. Everybody needs to understand that. We need to tighten our belt. But it's not only the masses that needs to tighten their belt. Those in government too need to tighten their belt. Because you guys say, oh, tighten your belt while you are loosening your belt. It doesn't work that way. And that's why there's a disconnect between the masses and the people in government. Because they can't find them trustworthy. They can't, they, what they are doing is not telling us, it's not showing good representation of the situation of things in the country. It's as if you are just deceiving us and robbing us, you know, to cater for your own, like this, you know, your own large life. We can continue to be, you know, um, punishing, you know, suffering while you are living well. All right, um, uh, Doctor, you are spot on when you talk about Nigerians um, focusing more on the federal government as opposed to uh, making an uh, all-encompassing, you know, uh, 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 accusations, so to speak, whenever they want to make such accusations as to who's responsible for what they're going through. And true to that, the um, the item that's agricultural um, development is on the concurrent list. So therefore, um, the federal, the excuse me, the state government as well have a role to play. But we're going to get to that uh, in a little bit. Let's also talk about the flip side of the fiscal policy, uh, talking about the monetary policy. Um, in your view, do you think the CBN's you know, recent actions. When I say recent, I'm, I'm talking about perhaps in the last year or two. You think their actions have contributed to where we are right now? Now, just very recently, uh, about two weeks ago, we saw another raised NPR. You see, there is a disconnect between the monetary policy and the Nigeria economy um, with what I can see. Because monetary economics believe that once there is inflation, what is causing it is there is too much money in the circulation. But we need to ask ourselves the honest question in Nigeria that are we actually having the problem of too much money in circulation? Because we need to ask ourselves what actually brought about increases in prices of things in the country. You know, it is when we do this um, proper romancing that we'll be able to understand if actually 
the problem we are having is too much money or you know the, the, the policy of government. Because it is the exchange rate, fix or fix the removal of subsidy on petrol that brought about increase in prices of things. And if that is the issue, then you cannot use monetary policy to solve real problem, you know, the real sector of the economy. So, but when it comes to monetary policy, they have to do what they have to do. As far as monetary economics is concerned, once there's increase in prices, it means there's too much money in circulation. And once there's too much money in circulation, then, you know, you have to make use of the tools in your hands to reduce the excess liquidity in the economy. But like I said, we need to ask ourselves, the problem we are witnessing, is it actually about too much money in the economy or the impact of the policies of government? Now, um, that's also what a lot of uh, both experts and non-experts alike are asking, because in the CBN's assertion before the raising of the NPR, um, they seem to, um, I mean, they are the professionals, that's uh, the CBN's team led by Mr. Cardoso, have said that this is going to bode well for Nigerians, um, uh, perhaps maybe not necessarily in the short term, but they actually said that one of the reasons is to drive down inflation. Uh, looking at what has happened globally, particularly in the likes of the USA and in you know, other parts of Europe, uh, Nigerians and, well, not just Nigerian experts, um, you know, globally as well, there was some expectation that we will see a dropping, you know, or a dovish stance. But instead, the CBN chose to go the other route. So um, are you saying now that um, what the CBN has done... Uh, you know, is is directly linked to what we're seeing right now and they shouldn't have in the first place? Is that what you are a certain, Doctor? All right, we'll take a very short break. When we come back, we will uh, continue and then, of course, uh, consequently round up the conversation. If you're just tuning in, uh, this is Market Insight, and uh, we have been talking about Nigeria, uh, the inability of Nigerians to afford healthy uh, meals because, uh, as I mentioned, it's one thing to eat at all to start with. It's another thing, another kettle of fish to eat healthy. And the latter is where Nigerians have a problem. So we are indeed uh, assessing the impact of this uh, generally. Our guest has been Dr. Ajima Olusheye. He's an economics lecturer at the University of Lagos. When we come back, uh, the rest of the program this morning. Stay with us. Welcome back to Market Insights. Going back to the conversation, uh, Dr. Lusha is still with us. Doctor, can you hear me now? Can you hear me too? Yes, I can hear you, Doctor, loud and clear. I was just following up on what you mentioned earlier about uh, the CBN's decisions and they doing what they feel is best. But, you know, to um, reiterate, they had said, that's uh, Mr. Cardoso and his team, that uh, their action was essentially get towards driving down um, inflation, as he were, inflationary pressures, if you like. But um, looking at it um, from a wider uh, lens, uh, what happened in the USA with the Fed cuts and, you know, how it affected other parts of the world, particularly in Europe, um, the expectation over there and even down here was that the CBN was going to toll the route of the US Fed, but instead we saw the converse. So, um, Following your assertion and what the CBN uh, team, led by the governor, has said, um, would you say that um, they should have done it the other way around, as opposed to how they did it some two weeks ago? Um, I, I will not want to give a, a, a yes or no answer to that question, because, you see, the CBN might have some um, information at their disposal that I don't have. But what I am going to say is this. This is not the first time the CBN is increasing the interest rate. And the, they need to ask themselves the honest question. From the last time they increased the NPR, was there a reduction in inflation? 
And if there's reduction in inflation, is it the monetary policy that brought about that reduction in the inflation? Because if they honestly assess this properly, then if what they arrive at is that, okay, their policy is working, then fine. But if not, then they need to start asking themselves that the, the route they are going, is it the appropriate route? Because you see, industries need credits. And the rate at which they are getting that credit will determine their investments. So if you are increasing the interest rate, is it actually in the interest, in the overall interest, or in the interest of some people? Because the only advantage I can see is that people that can bring cash into the country will be able to have you know, higher returns on their money. But those that are actually manufacturing, interested in the real sector, we really favor them. So we need to ask ourselves, which one is better? Is it the real sector or those that are bringing in liquidity? But I'm not saying that liquidity is not important because if there's no liquidity, you know, it will affect the real sector. But we need to romance this properly to look at the direction with which we are taking. Because overall, we must say, okay, you know, we need more liquidity now. But if we get that liquidity and the risk sector has been and, and the life of the risk sector has been squeezed out, then of what benefits? Is the liquidity? What will the liquidity? Do? What will the liquidity do? So these are the things that the CBA needs to give an honest answer to. It's not just about you know, because to me in Nigeria, I believe you know the monetary policy is about ten percent. The, the the banking sector is just controlling about the ten percent of the liquidity in the country. The remaining ninety percent is outside um, the bank. So if that is the case of what impact will the um, interest rate and all those things have on the real economy. So these are the real issues that the central bank needs um, to actually um, analyze properly to, to channel the way forward for them. All right, now let's... Um move away from there to something slightly tangential. Um, subsequently, we're going to talk about how to deal with all of these, but let's go on a tangent a little bit. Uh, think about a month or two, the FCCPC, that's the uh, Federal Consumer uh, Protection Commission, as he were, um, there were reports that they wanted to clamp down on the market, especially on extortionist pricing and, uh, well, price gouging, basically. Uh, which got many talking, even though they, they, they later refuted that particular report. But however, the conversation continued anyway as to whether or not um, price control is what was needed to help Nigerians in the aspect of affordability. What are your thoughts on this, Dr. Lucia? That advice is the first instance because it's not practicable. <laughs> there is no way government, you know, we've passed that year right now. There is no way any government can come and um, uh, enforce uh, price control measures in the country. You know, the, the, the market is more sophisticated than, you know, any price control. Once any government tries that, it will just drive all the commodities in the, the black market and um, at the end of the day the price is even far worse than the way it is so instead of um, going the route of price um, ceiling or whatever you know price control the best thing is government should be looking at the supply side how can we increase supply because definitely once the supply increases it will reduce the price but thinking about price control <laughs> I know more in the seventies, so I don't know who brought that idea, but it cannot work. <laughs> we pass that here, right? The what it can't work. Right. We'll just, okay then. Thank you very much, uh, yes. Doctor, for that one. It takes my mind back to uh, when uh, former President Muhammadu Buhari came in the eighties, his first coming, that is, like we like to call it, where he tried to do that, and then the enforcement essentially saw 
uh, what's it called? So horse, horse whip wielding soldiers trying to, you know, carry out that particular order as he were. Well, it didn't, it didn't um, turn out well, uh, that particular policy. But away from that, uh, let's talk about addressing this one head on uh, as we, um, you know, come to a close. As we pull the curtains on the show this morning. Um, Earlier, you talked about holding the government, uh, the state governments to account. And uh, I corroborated that by mentioning uh, some of the items on the exclusive and concurrent list. In this case, we have uh, state governments controlling agricultural development issues, as he were. So what do we need to do at that level, talking about the subnational, to address these issues head on so that, you know, in, in our own little way, Nigerians can be able to afford certain things, especially in the context of the conversation this morning, healthy diets. Uh, that's one. Two, um, with shrinking income, as you were, also still talking about the subnational level, and then perhaps you can stretch it to the national level. How can they be addressed? How can it be addressed? How do we make sure that, you know, one and the other meet each other halfway and give Nigerians a better uh, you know, standard of living. Um, actually, when you see what's happening in Nigeria, you know, every state has their own Ministry of Agriculture, and they have this, uh, um, I can't remember, you know, this is what you call OSADEP, like the OSADEP Ocean State um, Agricultural Development, whatever, whatever. So the, the government think that solely the issue of um, the state government think that solely the duty of agriculture should be undoed by this unit, you know, the state's agricultural development program or whatever. But the situation in the country now is critical. So the, the state's government needs to be physically present, not just through that unit. They should collaborate with that unit and ensure that more is being done on the forefront of agriculture, because we cannot continue, you know, the way we were and expect different results. To expect different results, then we must do some things differently. And when you look at the issue of um, food um, scarcity, you see, that is where the state government needs to come in and do more than what they are doing currently now, because it's not just about providing um, fertilizers, um, tractors, and things like that. They need you know, to actually go down to the farmers to understand what is happening and see how they can come in more than what they are doing now. Well, we, we, we've said that there, there is the issue with insecurity, there is the increase in the price of oil, um, there is the weather, uh, what's it called? So government needs to look at all this and see what they can do. For instance, you know, our weather forecast, they should be able to be passing those informations across to farmer timely to let them know that this situation of things, if you need to uh, plant, this is the appropriate time to plant, this is the appropriate time to do this and that. They need to push out those informations the more, let it get to the end of the farmers. Then the fertilizers, the tractors, you know, are they ensuring that those things are getting to the farmers early enough and enough of what they need and at what price. You know, all these things are what government needs to start looking at because the way the world is going now, you know, the, the, the state, there's nothing stopping the state from actually going into farming themselves. That, okay, it is this local government that owns this farm here. Yeah? It's this state government that owns this farm here. Yeah? So, because we need to do more to actually increase the supply of food in this country. If we don't do that, if we are looking at, okay, these are the policies or you know, this is the way government should operate. The situation here now is critical. And when the situation is critical, it requires critical solution. So this is not you know, um, using the usual method. We have to make sure that you know, we think out of the bucket of the, um, uh, of the box to do the appropriate thing to lift Nigeria out of where we are now. Because you see what we are seeing now in the near future, the consequences of not eating well will start manifesting on the country in terms of sickness, spending more, you know, on the hospital bills, 
people not being able to be other productive as much as they want to, then at the end of the day, is that what you want? So these are the real issues that you know the state government, the local government, and at the national level need you know to start asking themselves what needs to be done, what have we done, what else can we do? Because that is the real questions we need to be asking ourselves. What have we done? What else can we do to move to, to actually reduce the food supply problem in the country? Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Olushe for joining us on the program this morning. Uh, we do appreciate your time. Dr. Ajun Olushe is an economics lecturer at the University of Lagos Research Fellow at the Institute of Nigeria China Development Studies, also uh, Unilag. Many thanks again, Dr. for joining us this morning on Market Insight. We have been talking about the rising cost of uh, healthy diets in the country and assessing the impact as he were. This came on the heels of the announcement or the report rather released by the National Bureau of Statistics as well as the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition where they said that uh, the average national cost of COHD talking about the cost of healthy diet has increased to 46.2%. And then narrowing it down to our city right now, the city which we're in, Lagos, uh, that is, you are going to need an average of 1,615 Naira to have a healthy meal, not just any old kind of meal, but an actual healthy meal, which would take into account the legumes, the starchy uh, condensates, uh, and the rest of them, basically, that would give you the required, or give your body required nutrition as it were. And that is, you know, increasingly difficult every other day for Nigerians. I mentioned earlier, citing the World Bank survey or the World Bank's report, the middle income households have gone down under. They've gone to being poor, while the poor ones are, well, nowhere to be seen. Uh, income is shrinking on a daily basis, but the government, as we know them to uh, be working on it today, are doing as much as they can to see that uh, uh, the situation stabilizes, uh, the situation is much better, and Nigerians can have a better lease of life. Both uh, uh, the fiscal policies by the federal government as well as the monetary policies as well. Now we've seen our, we've heard rather our uh, guest talking about um, fixing the supply side of things or the supply sector, and also you know talking about um, uh, the subnational governments being available, being present, uh, assessing the situation rather than for holding their arms and expecting uh, all the intervention to be carried out by the national uh, government or the government at the center, as he were. And then, of course, uh, you know, the CBN, too, talking about the monetary side of things. He has spoken about uh, uh, what they did with the NPR uh, two weeks ago and uh, what he feels should have been the case. Of course, uh, talking about uh, doing it the other way around as to what, as opposed to what the CBN has done. But we're hoping that all of these will coalesce into uh, one uh, huge step forward for Nigerians and Nigeria as a whole. And we're going to have, we're going to see something, you know, shift. And then, of course, uh, being able to afford things, the basis, the basic commodities would be uh, easy for every single Nigerian. Uh, that's it on Market Insight. We'll take a quick look right now at the currency market as we uh, close the program this morning. And the official market today, um, Monday, October 7, we saw the Naira trading at uh, 1,672 Naira to the dollar, 2,227 Naira to the pound sterling, and um, 1,868 Naira to the euro. That's all on the official market. On the parallel market, uh, the Naira dollar trade is 1,670 Naira. The pound sterling, 2,270 Naira. And the euro, 1,870 Naira. That's what it looks like on the Forex market. And that's where we pull the curtains down on the program today. Market Insight, thank you very much for joining us. Do stay tuned for the news update at 12. Uh, Souk Sports at 1 p.m. and the major news bulletin later on at 3 p.m. Again, thank you for joining us. I am David Chiodo. Markets Insight continues tomorrow morning at the same time. Have a good day.